All right, stat class. Uh, today we are looking at the quadratic formula. We all remember this from algebra. And so here we have a quadratic formula. Remember, negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is all coming from our quadratic, the, the general form of a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So, another, so in other words, a quadratic formula can be used for any quadratic that is not factorable or for solving any quadratic. For all that quadratic work that we did earlier in the year when we did the solving, we could have just been using the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's solve this quadratic. Okay, remember, this is your A, this is your B, this is your C. A is always the coefficient of the x squared. B is always the number in front of x. C is the last number. Okay, and then don't forget, if there's no number in front of x squared, if you need to, always put a 1. Okay, so you always have an a value to be 1 if you don't, if you need it. So in this case here, a would equal 1, just in case. Okay, so we have an a, b, and a c. So I'm going to fill in my formula. B. There's my B. My B is already ne negative, so a double negative 12. Plus and minus the square root of, remember, use your parentheses, negative 12 squared minus 4 This is what I do. I get my blanks all set up. Now I just have to fill in these three blanks. So remember, negative 4ac. So here's the a, here's the c. So 4, and then here's your c of 3. And then this is 2a. So there's the 4 right there. So now I have double negative becomes 12, plus and minus the square root of something, all over 8. Okay, two, two. Now this right here, use your calculator. Do not type in the radical bar. Notice I have a radical bar right here. Because if you do your square root symbol, not all of these answers are going to be perfect squares. You're going to have these god-awful decimals. Okay, so just write your square root symbol down and just start typing into your calculator. Parentheses, negative 12 squared, minus 4 times 4 times 3. I'm going to do that right now in the calculator. So I have parentheses, negative 12, close parentheses, square, minus 4, parentheses, 4, parentheses, 3. Hit equal, 96. Now, remember in our last lessons, you guys were simplifying radicals. This is not a perfect square. 96 is not a perfect square, so I had to simplify this. So remember your list of perfect squares. Remember I had that, the, I had you guys using the first 10, okay, in your homework assignment here for these next two days. Um, you'll only need your first 10 perfect squares, okay? So remember 96, I'm going to simplify square root of 96. I'll do that over I'll do that right here. Square root of 96 is broken up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 6. So 16 becomes 4 radical 6. Remember, square root the perfect, leave the other alone. Okay, so now we got to finish this off. So I have 12 plus and minus 4 radical 6 all over 8. Now we have to reduce. Okay, now we're reducing these. So don't forget, when you reduce, you only reduce the, the um, coefficient and the lead value with the denominator if you can. You cannot touch the radical. 
Okay, that square root of 6 cannot be touched because the 8 is not inside of a radical. Okay, so the only thing that we're looking at is the 4, the 12, and the 8. And what goes into a 4, 12, and 8? That's right, 4. So 4 goes into itself once, 4 goes into 12 three times, and 4 goes into 8 twice. So we have a final answer that is 3 plus and minus radical 6 all over 2. If you want to put the 1 in front of the radical 6, you're more than welcome to. Okay, it's not necessary to put the 1 there. And that's our final answer. Okay, so we just solve this equation using the quadratic formula. Okay, let's look at another example, problem number 2. Okay, again, here's your A, your B, your C. We'll start filling in the formula right away. So I have, this time, negative 4 plus and minus the square root of 4 squared. Now I'm not using the parentheses. Actually, you know what? I'll put the parentheses around it. Okay. Normally, if it's a negative, I always put the parentheses. Here, it's positive, so I don't have to. So it's minus 4 times 2 times your negative 3. Remember, that's your A and C. All over your 2 times blank and I'm waiting to be filled in with this too. Okay. So I have negative 4 plus and minus the square root of something all over 4. And again, I'm just going to go type this into the calculator. Or you can do it, some of you can do it in your head. So parentheses 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3, 40. Okay, so now I have to clean up 40. I cannot divide 4 into everything. 4 does not go into the square root of 40. The only thing that we can reduce is when we have the value in front. So I have to have the coefficient. So this has to be in simplest form first. Okay, so 40 becomes... 4 times 10. Square root of 4, square root of 10. Okay, the largest perfect square for 40 is 4. So that becomes 2 radical 10. All right, so I have negative 4 plus and minus 2 radical 10 all over 4. Okay. All right, so now what goes into everything here? Remember, you can't touch the radical 10. So yes, 2 goes into everything, so 2 goes into itself once, into 4, don't lose the minus sign, and then 2. So we have a final answer, negative 2 plus and minus radical 10 all over 2. And that's it. That's all that we can do. Nothing else. All right. Last question. Last question. So A, B, C. So a plus 7 right there is your B value, so it's a negative 7 plus and minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times a negative 15 all over. 2 times 2. Okay, that's your 2a. So I have negative 7 plus and minus the square root of something all over 4. Okay, you can type this into my handy dandy calculator. So I have my parentheses 7, close parentheses, square. Minus 4 times 2 times negative 15 hit equal 169. Okay. One sixty nine. I have to break that down. Guess what? 
169 is actually a perfect square. There's nothing wrong here. We get lucky. 169 is a perfect square. The square root of 169 is 13. So we are actually looking at negative 7 plus and minus 13 all over 4. Okay, so we actually got lucky. The square root of 169 is 13. Okay, now what do I do when we get down to here? There's no radical to worry about. We're all done simplifying. There's, the only thing that I can do now is to follow my plus and minus signs. What does that mean? We Remember, when we have a quadratic, we always have two answers. So I'm going to do, so I'll, I'll write it out. The first answer that we have is a negative 7 plus 13. All over 4. And then the second answer that we have is a negative 7 minus 13 all over 4. Okay, so what does that mean for us? Well, negative 7 plus 13 is 6 over 4. And now I just have to reduce that. 3 over 2. So there's one answer. And then down here, negative 7 minus 13 is a negative 20 all over 4. And then I just have to reduce that or reduce that by 2. So we have negative... Actually, no. Reduce that by 4. What am I saying? 4 goes into 20. So we have negative 5 as an answer. There. So we got lucky on this one. We had a perfect square, 169. Okay? All right, folks. So we just did the quadratic formula. Um, in your homework assignment or in your assignments, your two assignments for the week, you have six questions to do. Okay? Um, six and six. All right, folks. Good luck with your assignment.